just want to take you back to Saturday morning when you first heard what Hamas had done. What went through your head? Regret that the international community has not heeded our warnings for all these years. Regret that this was allowed to fester for decades. Regret that there is a tension now in the BBC and all over the world uh, only because blood has been spilled. I only hope that, or I wish, we did not get to this moment. So you listed, the, you listed a number of because, things you regret because, there. Because, Do you regret because, the loss because, of innocent because, life in well, Israel? Every, every loss of life is regrettable, of course, and tragic, absolutely. The question is, how do we stop this? How do we provide an alternative path? How do we learn the lessons and the mistakes of the past? How do we treat the Palestinian people after 100 years of suffering equally to all other nations? How do we stop this demise into the mayhem that you have described? Do not underestimate people's will and desire for freedom to end occupation and captivity. This isn't about Hamas only. This isn't about the last 48 hours. This has been ongoing for more than 100 years. It started here, by the way, Louise, in this very city. It was Britain that gave our rights away without even consulting us. And then this whole international Western approach to us has been failure, dismal failure. This is about time that we really give a different path because there is no other alternative. As our ambassador today even just said, justice, not vengeance not vengeance, and peace, not war. And we, the Palestine National Movement, we, the PLO, have given that alternative avenue 30 years ago. We have recognized Israel. We have committed to negotiations and nonviolence. We have committed to international law and resolutions. Israel was supposed to do one thing, end its occupation and stop its colonial settlement expansion. It did not do this for once. All the successive governments and the international community was supposed to provide accountability and guarantees. The U.S.-led international community did not do so. So okay. we are here today, Louise, and the question is, the most important question, how do we stop Israeli massacres that are about to happen against Palestinian civilians? Well, and how do we... How excuse do me. We, I, I, I want to jump in on, and I, I appreciate the historical context, and we will come back to that. Just on the last 48 hours, though, do you support what Hamas launched on Saturday morning? Well, this is not the right question, uh, Louis. really the right it's question. It's an important question. No, no, it is not an important question. You, because, because Whether you, know, you support their action or not because, is an important because, question. No, 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 it is not an important question. Hamas is a, is a group, is a militant group. You're talking to, uh, with the Palestinian representative. Our position is very well known and clear. And what, uh, what and, is that? Do you support you Hamas's cannot, actions? And, and then you cannot equate, you cannot equate. This is not about support or not support. I am here to represent my people, the Palestinian people what they are going through. I'm not here to condemn anybody. And if anybody that needs to be condemned, it's what you call the only democracy in the Middle East, that is Israel, between parentheses, that is doing what you have just reported, targeting civilians. And this has not just happened the last 48 hours. I'll Hamas you, was just I'll targeting you, Palestinians, you, but you won't condemn uh, that. I'll tell, I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. Hamas is not the Palestinian government, OK? The Israeli government is giving orders for its organized army. So please don't draw any symmetry here. Don't equate. There is no way you can draw any symmetry. And don't equate between the occupied and the occupier. This doesn't, this, this doesn't serve justice to understand for your audience and viewers the real uh, situation. Since Israel's establishment, it has had one military doctrine. When it fights, it goes and fights civilians, kill civilians, so they pressure the, the fighters. Since 1948, and go back to the record, and this has been repeated in Gaza and will continue to be repeated. So the conversation is not a blame game. I am not in the business of blaming the victim here. The, the real conversation is how do we stop this vicious, deadly cycle? You just condemned Israel for killing civilians and you won't condemn Hamas for killing civilians. How many times you have interviewed Israeli officials, Louise? Hundreds of times. Hundreds of times. How many times Israel have committed war crimes right live on your own cameras? Do you start by asking them to condemn themselves? Have you? You don't. You don't. No, no, I'll answer that question. You don't. You know why I refuse to answer this question? Because I, I refuse the premise of it. Because at the very heart of it is misrepresentation of the whole thing. Because it's the Palestinians that are always expected to condemn themselves. 
I mean, come on, this is a political conflict. We have been denied our rights for a long time. So this is the wrong starting point. The right starting point is to focus on the root causes, is to try and get out of this extreme dark tunnel as opposed to this business and how, by how, BBC how and the mainstream media for, for 75 years. You, get, you bring us here whenever there are Israelis who are killed. Did you bring me here when many Palestinians in the West Bank, more than 200 uh, over the last few months? Do you invite me when there is such Israeli provocations in Jerusalem and elsewhere? Because Israel, what Israelis have seen, which we started by saying tragic, the last 48 hours, the Palestinians see every day for the last 70, uh, 50, 50 years. You know the situation in Gaza, you've just described it. This is the biggest open air prison. Those people, two million, have been taken hostage by Israel for the last 16 years. So I'm saying this just to say, Louise, perhaps this is about time we abandon this, this rhetoric, very dangerous, this framework, and we start giving people the real ugly truth sometimes. What is the solution in your eyes? International law. That's it. International, that the equal application of international resolutions and law and legitimacy, as you did in Ukraine. Would you bring the Ukrainian ambassador here and start asking him to condemn some of his fighters? We need to fully and equally apply the rules that were created by the League of Nations after the horrors of the Second World War. We need to make sure that Israel is not the exception. It has been for the last 75 years. We need to make sure that nobody is above the law. Britain is renowned, Louise, for the rule of law. I think that's the solution. Israel is an occupying force. It is responsible to provide protection for the people under its occupation. And should they commit crimes and crimes against humanity in the coming hours and weeks, it must be held accountable by the international community and the international judicial system. Mr. Sam, thank you very much for coming on the programme. Thank you.